But going forward, we should also be careful that the noble effort to end sexual harassment does not degenerate into a witch hunt. It can happen, as the Washington Post just proved. So with that in mind, two things to remember. First, anonymous accusations always lead to abuses. The right to face your accuser is the cornerstone of justice and has been since ancient Rome. That's why it's enshrined in the Sixth Amendment to the Constitution. It's why we ban star chambers. We don't allow people to accuse others of armed robbery or murder from behind the shield of anonymity. Why do media outlets allow it in cases of sexual harassment? If you're going to name the accused, you ought to name the accuser, assuming it's an adult. News organizations are not courts. They shouldn't take a side when guilt and innocence are in dispute. It's too easy to get it wrong, and they often do. Second, not everyone accused of a sex offense is guilty. Not every accuser is telling the truth. I learned this the hard way a number of years ago when I was accused of felony rape by a woman I'd literally never even seen. She was a certified public accountant in Indiana, an upstanding member of her community, and also apparently delusional. Her claims were grotesque, but they were highly specific. The assault, she said, took place in the back room of a restaurant in Louisville on a specific day at around 10.30 p.m. She included loads of graphic and horrifying detail. It was stomach turning, and yet none of it, none of it was true. I spent the next two months trying to stay out of jail. I couldn't tell my children because I knew they'd be ashamed. I couldn't tell my employer because I knew I'd be fired immediately. I spoke only to lawyers and I paid them a fortune. I took a polygraph exam from the former head polygrapher at the FBI. I never stopped worrying that the charges would become public and destroy my life. Everyone accused of a sex offense did something wrong. Everybody knows that. And I knew that no one would believe otherwise. This isn't a defense of sexual harassment or misbehavior, obviously. It's just a reminder that real life is complicated, more complicated than sermonizing on Twitter. Sometimes the mob is wrong. Sometimes the innocent are crushed. That's always a tragedy, no matter what the charge is. Of course, crushing the innocent may also be the point of the exercise, and we're seeing that. Last week, a feminist called Emily Linden announced on Twitter that she was, quote, not at all concerned about innocent men losing their jobs in the search for perpetrators of sexual harassment. Quote, if some innocent men's reputations have to take a hit in the process of undoing the patriarchy, that is a price I am absolutely willing to pay. Linden, not surprisingly, is a columnist at Teen Vogue. We asked her to come on tonight to talk about her views, but she refused. Instead, we're joined by Kathy Rue. Kathy, thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So, I mean, look, I agree with you completely. I think that if someone perpetrates a crime, legal or moral, like sexual harassment, that person ought to be held to account. So I right. want to be really clear. Right. I would never defend that. Right. I would never defend that either. But the whole point of the exercise is to bring about justice, to make sure that the guilty pay and the innocent go free. Exactly. This woman seems to be, Sarah is saying, that it doesn't matter that all men are guilty by virtue of being men. That's the opposite of justice, that's collective punishment. You wouldn't be for that, would you? No, I mean, I'm not for social injustice, but what she's trying to say is it, it, that it would be microscopic compared to what women have been through. You mentioned witch hunts. There are no warlock hunts. There were never any wizard hunts. I mean, women are the ones that are often persecuted, and the mobs that you were talking about, the mobs are usually the men that are burning innocent women at the stake. So women okay. are usually the ones that suffer much more than men, and I think that's what Emily okay, well, Linden assuming, was trying assuming to say. That's, I mean, just for the sake of argument, I'll assume that that's true. We're not teaching a history class here, but right. certainly people have been persecuted unfairly by mobs, that's for sure. For centuries, women sexes. have been persecuted, okay, yes. Sure. And, and, and men too, in some cases. But, but leaving the sex aside, if it was wrong then, why wouldn't you be every bit as horrified that it's going on now or that it could potentially happen now? Why wouldn't you be horrified by what this woman wrote? Well, I, she she was defending it, saying that it would be um, it would be wrong, but microscopic in the sense that what happens to women and women's reputations is so much worse than what would happen to a man's reputation. Women's reputations are destroyed constantly on a daily basis, and so and facts men, don't I mean, so facts don't really matter. So in other words, she's saying you should respect me when I make the case that facts don't really matter? Well, maybe she's, she's trying saying. to say, let's level the playing field, and men are finally feeling the pain that women have felt for a long time, for centuries. And that's good. 
well, it's good when um, the sexes, when the genders are equal. And she's saying that maybe it's about time that they're so equal. So in other words, you're saying, like, I think what happened to women is wrong, so I'm going to do it to men because it feels good. Why but, should I take you seriously as a person if that's the case you're Well, I, I, social injustice is not okay, but she's saying it happens to women all of the time. So men are finally getting a taste of it. Women are finally getting a little bit of power. So now if men are starting to feel a little bit of the pain, welcome to our club. Huh. So how would you feel if this standard, yeah. which is horrifying, yeah. were applied to crimes like, I don't know, murder or armed robbery? Like, I don't know if you did it, but you look exactly like someone who has done it. Therefore, if you're punished for it, like, you know, at least you now know how it feels. How well, would you feel about that? Well, it's, it's rare. Women rarely accuse men of sexual harassment. It's rare that in her article she was actually saying that. In her tweets she was saying that it was rare that it actually happened. She doesn't know anything. What do you mean rare? Look, well, that's what she was saying. Here's what she doesn't know. If you can present the stats, like actual social science on that, right. but here's what we know is that people are flawed. And right. most people tell the truth, but not everybody does. And that's why we have things like due process and a justice system right. that tries to determine objectively who is guilty and who is innocent and punishes only the first category. And right. she's suggesting, and a lot of other people like you are suggesting, just throw that out because everybody who makes an accusation is telling the truth when we know that's not true. Well, like, I don't just... want to live in the world you're describing. Do you really want to? No, no. Like I said, I mean, in social injustice, and I don't, I don't believe in that, but I'm saying well, let's live in a world with everyone's reputations at stake, not just women. Not just women right. are called names. Not just women's reputations are at stake. There aren't just witch hunts. Let's have the wizard hunts. Let's have everyone um, b burned at the stake, if anyone's going to burn at the stake. So I Wait, think that's a philosophy. I mean, philosophy. wouldn't it be better to treat people as individuals and yeah. assess the claims against people on Absolutely. an individual basis? Absolutely, and, but it's not happening. And like be, it's, it's not, not happening. happening for women. No, women are the minority in this country, and we still are um, fighting for our equal rights. So men are still in power. You are still in power. So, but, so you're suggesting that if women ever took power, whatever that means, I mean, I don't buy the premise of what you just said, by the way, but right. let's just say that if a group that felt itself to be oppressed took power, that it would oppress the group beneath it just as kind of payback is fair? Is that what you're saying? Well, no, that group is not in power. So what I'm saying is that if that group were to be in power, it would probably be a better place because we all know that women are less violent than men. Uh, they commit less murders than men, and women are just um, not that way. So it would actually probably be a better world if women were in charge. So yeah. yeah. I mean, you may be right. You're not making that case very persuasively, I have to say. Why, 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 why is it that in the case of these kinds of allegations, yeah. the accusers identity is shielded like the the, the basis of because justice the is the idea that no not the victim the, the victim. accuser no no this none of this has gone to court the facts are not fully known okay okay the victim and the accuser are two different things once you've right. proven you've been harmed you're the victim before then you're the accuser right why would we jettison thousands of years of tradition of jurisprudence right and hide the identity of the accuser how would you feel if you were accused of something and you didn't know who was accusing you Right. Well, but we're seeing there are many men that are guilty right now. So, sure, yeah, there are. Yeah, there are many men that are guilty, and um, you, you weren't one of them, but many men are guilty. So these women are speaking up, and okay. they're having a voice now. So it's, it's wonderful that they have a voice, and they feel empowered to do a so. Vo a voice, but no name or face. So in other words, let me just ask you again, how would you, and by the way, I think most people accused of these kinds of crimes are guilty, okay? But what That's been breaks proven. on my yes, conscience yes, is that some of them, some of them aren't. Right. And so I'm wondering how you would feel if I said, you know, Kathy, um, the, I've spoken to someone who accuses you of something right. that's career ending, that's life ending. It's a grave moral crime. Right. And I'm not going to tell you who this person is, but I'm going to tell everybody what this person accuses you of. Wouldn't you say, hey, wait a second, who is this person? I want to face my accuser. Wouldn't you think that? I would feel like a woman has felt over the centuries, like the scarlet letter, like Hester Prynne that had to wear the scarlet letter A. I would feel like a woman, the way she's been treated over the centuries. Women have been accused for, for years, for hundreds of years, of crimes that they didn't commit because they weren't pure enough. But they haven't been accused anonymously, not in this country, because it's never been allowed until recently. Not it's it. never been allowed. And that would be, that would include the Puritan times, that would include the Hester Prynne era that you're referring to. People are not accused anonymously because that leads inevitably to abuses. I just want to leave on that concept. Do you understand that? Uh, what I'm abso saying? Absolutely. And I, as okay. I said, I don't, I don't believe that anyone should be accused falsely, but I understand uh, her way of thinking, Emily Linden's way of thinking, and I can see what she was saying, that if men suffer in just a microscopic way compared to the way women have suffered, so be it. Yeah. I hope you never sit on a jury, much as I like you, Kathy. No, Thank I like you. you too.
Ned Ryan is a former speechwriter at the White House, recently wrote a piece called In Defense of Masculinity for the Journal of American Greatness, and he joins us tonight. Ned, thanks for coming on. Thanks, Tucker. Glad so to be here. How does your piece bear on the conversation, the national conversation we're having about sexual harassment? No, I, I, I think one of the things, one of the points I made in that piece, Tucker, uh, just really addressed the fact that we're dealing with some of this toxic masculinity that Hollywood and the media created. Uh, you, you go back and look at the years and years of conditioning of objectifying women, of turning them into you know, these objects in, in print and film and normalizing abhorrent behavior. And now people are acting in, in, on the left in the media in Hollywood, uh, you know, they're acting self-righteous and horrified at the behavior that is the end result of the conditioning that they received for years. And Tucker, one follows the other. If people have been conditioned for years to act in a certain way, they're going to behave a certain way. And so when you see them attacking this toxic masculinity, I want to make the argument, this is a culture that the left created. Some of us, and this is why I wrote that piece, have rejected that culture. We actually believe in self-discipline. We actually believe in virtue. The other great irony in all of this, Tucker, the left not only created toxic masculinity, they have enabled it. You look at the Harvey Weinsteins and the Bill Clintons and the John Conyers and the Al Frankens, again, and then they want to, as your, your guest just point, uh, just tried to make the argument, they want to pin that terrible behavior of some men on all men. And in fact, say that all men are guilty of toxic masculinity when in fact we are not and we aren't even capable of abusing those around us. And so I think this is a conversation that we have to have about what we're really discussing and who actually created the toxic masculinity. It didn't come from the right. It was something that was created by the left. And now we're seeing the end results of it. So it seems like about 10 years ago, but it was just uh, several months ago when the vice president said, I think to a reporter, right. that he does not go out to dinner uh, with with women um, alone, and he was right. accused of being some kind of snake handling fundamentalist freak and jumped on by feminists. I wonder if they would reassess that now in light of everything we've seen in the last six weeks. No, I, I think one of the funny things that we've seen really in the last couple of weeks, I wouldn't say funny, perhaps ironic, is that these liberal elites who sneered at us, who actually believe in a culture of practice, faith, and respect for women and respect for the institution of marriage. Well, it turns out that those who are sneering at us were actually, in fact, these patriarchal, misogynistic perverts and predators. And so there are some of us that actually, many of us that actually believe in this, this world that we're in, that again, what sets us apart is self-discipline and respect and virtue and a certain behavior. It's the small de decisions that make the man. And again, we, don't, we, will, we refuse to be pinned with this toxic masculinity because many of us have lived our lives in a very different way. And in fact, where it's coming from is the behavior of the left and their, uh, their conditioning and the culture that they have created. Well, yeah, because I have to say with, with one exception, I guess the allegations against Roy Moore would be the exception, but in almost all right. these other cases, these are not evangelicals who are being accused. These are self-described feminists. That's right, that's right. No, and so yeah. I, I think the other thing too that, that needs to be discussed, Tucker, is this. You know, we're seeing the end result of decades and decades of conditioning in this sexual harassment, this period of what we're, t we're seeing right now. I think the other thing that concerns me a little bit, as, as your, your former guest was a trying, a th trying to get to, I think, I am concerned about the social experimentation that is taking place and trying to remove the manliness out of our boys. Well, of and, course. you know, when you see some of these things that are taking place in our education system, it's of deep concern to me. Listen, I'm all for women, for all the breakthrough they, they've made, for girl power, all of those great things. But I think the pendulum has swung too far the other well, of way. Course. Be being I think the for boys women. are being left behind. Of being for women does not mean being against men, of course. Uh, well, and see, course and I think that's where the left has gone right. wrong. No, I, 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 I think couldn't they've agree been more. so far. But, but in more. response now, to the toxic we're, we're, masculinity they've created, right. they have wanted to keep our boys suspended in this Peter Pan state and refuse to let them be men. In fact, they don't even want our boys to be boys. They want them to be girls. So I think it's something we have to push back right. at right now and not let it continue down this path. Ned Ryan, thanks for joining us tonight.